Hey again! Welcome to part 2 of my BlendIf tutorial. In this section I'll be going over some more advanced techniques. If you don't know what BlendIf is, and you haven't watched the first video, check that out right here. Alright, let's get started. In this image we used previously, I talked about how the light areas and the dark areas we can drop out which means that high contrast images typically work best with BlendIf. So what happens if you have an image like this where the contrast is actually quite low? If we turn on this black and white layer, you'll see that it's all very samey. And if we want those yellow bits, there's no easy way to get to those. Because if you'll notice, we'll go to the BlendIf and we'll start to drop the lights and those yellow bits are the first to go. If we drop the darks, they also go soon after there as well. So the first thing you might do is come up to select and color range and then try to select all those yellow bits. And a lot of the times this will actually get the job done. So give it a try first before you use the blend if. And so if we just click around, we'll get a decent selection and then we'll just hide that. And let's zoom in a little bit and you'll see that the edges are a little bit unnatural. They're kind of sharp. A little bit rounded and it's not going to give you a supernatural look. It looks a little bit digital. You can adjust those edges and try to get a better result but um, it's only going to get you so far. And so you come back to this and you can put this on this bunker wall if we want to get more moss on there. For the most part it looks pretty decent. You might blur those edges a little bit but it still looks a little bit unnatural. There's not enough detail or information in there for it to blend super well. So that's when we're going to go to blend if. So if you come in here, you'll notice that in the blend if it has a gray drop-down box, and in there is red, green, and blue. Those are your channels. And before we start using those, I'm going to explain what channels are. So let's go over to the dreaded channels dock. In the channels dock, you have red, green, and blue channels and the composite RGB. And so what this does is it takes black and white information from each of these channels and composites them into your colored image. And so you'll notice that there's varying degrees of contrast. In this blue one, you'll notice from the main image that this is yellow, which means there's going to be a lack of blue in there. And you can see the fact that there's a lack of blue because it's dark. So a dark area means there's a lack of that color, whereas a light area means there's more of it. And so you can kind of see how this is going to work for us. And so if we want to get rid of all this blue stuff in the image and keep more of the yellow, what we want to do is drop out the lights in the blue layer. So let's go back to RGB. We'll come to here and we'll go to blend if. And so we'll go down to the blue channel and because we want to drop out those lights, you'll see that you get an immediate result where it's dropping out the bluish areas and leaving us with more of the yellow. And so don't take it too far because we're going to adjust the other channels as well. And let's, uh, let's say we're happy with that for now. I'll turn on this black layer so it's easier to see. And you can see how much it actually got rid of. So we're going to go back to the channels again and check out the green channel now. And you'll notice in the green that there's quite a bit of light area in those orange bits, which means that there's a decent amount of green in there. And if you look at a color wheel, you'll notice that yellow and orange is between red and green, which means those blend together to make that color. So what we want to do is drop out the darks in the green layer because we want to keep the light bits. And so let's go back to this. We'll go back into blend if we'll go down to the green channel and we'll go to the dark areas and we'll start dropping those. And you'll notice it gets rid of more of that noise. And don't forget you can hold Alt while you move these sliders so you can split them and get a nicer blend. So we'll take it a decent amount there. We'll say we're happy with that. We'll go back to the channels again and we'll check out the red channel. And so the red channel, there's a lot of information in there because there's a lot of red in that sort of yellow orange. And so we want to get rid of some of the darker areas in the red channel. So we'll come back, do this again, we'll go to red and we'll start to drop out some of the darker areas. And we'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it working. And we don't want to take this too far because it is going to start killing some of our interior details, but you can take it to a point where it drops it out a decent amount but keeps some of what we had. And so now what we've done is used all these channels to get a better selection of that when otherwise we wouldn't be able to with BlendIf. And it's going to be much more natural than if we had used the color selection tool. So we're going to click OK now, and we're going to take off that black layer, and we'll zoom in, and you'll see it's got a much nicer blend. Now the edges in there aren't necessarily great, they're maybe a little bit dark, but this is one of those times where I would personally do some levels and color adjustments. So let's just bring that up and adjust this, and you'll see that it's kind of adjusting the colors and the uh, selection we've made. 
And so we maybe don't want some of that stuff to drop out. So we're going to do what we did before, create a new layer, select both of them, and just merge them down, which now means that our selection is permanent. And so then what we can do is just adjust the levels and colors a little bit. We'll drop that contrast down a teeny bit, and we'll bring up the color balance, and we'll just adjust it to try to match that moss in the photo a little bit better. So what we can do is come back in here and do what we've done before with the regular blend if stuff, just in the gray, and knock out the really dark bits of the back layer so those windows show through properly. And then what we'll do is we'll knock out those light bits and so it blends a little bit nicer and has more of it in the dark areas. You can go in there and adjust things and use a layer mask and make it look better, you know, adjust those colors a little bit more if they're not quite right. But ultimately, you can see that using those channels is something that's going to benefit you greatly when it comes to using Blend If. And sometimes it's easier just to go into the channels and mess with the sliders. So you don't have to always go to your channels dock and see exactly what it is you're doing. Sometimes you can just play with these and see what happens. So to quickly go to the blue, move that, get through the yellow, that means do the opposite side, right? Go into the green, move this side, it keeps the yellow, this side knocks it away, so do this side, and so on. It's very quick, very easy, and it's going to give you a lot more control. And even images that are high contrast and work fine just with the gray bit, you can go into these other channels and use those to fine tune your selection as well. For the next example, I'm gonna use another sky photo. And once I get started, I'm gonna speed it up a little bit, but just to give you an idea what I'm going to do is, let's say I want some more interesting clouds in the upper atmosphere, something like what you find in this photo. And basically, I want to get it behind in these lighter areas. And you could make selections by using the channels to do that, which might be a good way. But a really quick way to get a decent base for it, at the very least, you can use the blend if sliders by using those color channels in there. So let me put this in here, mask out the bottom, and I'm just going to speed this up so it's not too boring. With the rest of this, it's mostly what we've already seen before, just dealing with the different channel sliders finding a nice balance, getting the uh, background sky to pop through the foreground, doing a little bit of masking as well, just finding a nice balance overall. So um, for the next 30 or 40 seconds, I'll keep quiet while the uh, rest of the demo plays out, and then we'll move on to another example. And here we just have a couple of before and after shots. Another really great thing you can do is make selective adjustments with Blend If. Let me show you what I mean. Let's make a new adjustment layer and make it color balance. Let's make it fairly extreme. And let's say we like the way the background looks, but we don't want these main clouds to be so affected by that. So all you have to do is come down here and do the same thing we always do, which is knocking out those dark areas so they don't show through. You can see how that works. You have to play with it a little to get a natural blend, but and you can see how you can adjust the entire image really quickly without affecting everything in it. You can also come in here and let's say we want to reverse that and make it so it's those dark areas that get most of the color adjustment, make those really purplish. See, now it's inverted, and now it's really stylized, but you get the idea of what you can do with it. So another quick example here, let's say you want to have some blue fill light in the shadows of uh, Anthony Hopkins here. You can just take a color, go like that. And then what you can do is come into the Blend If and drop out all those light areas so it's only affecting the shadows. Say we're cool with that, and then uh, try different blending modes. I found that soft light actually works quite nicely here. And then after you're done with that, you can sit here and uh, adjust the colors if you want, the brightness as well. And if you look, you toggle that on and off. It's a nice blue fill light. You can do the same thing with painting. If you wanted to just paint within the shadows or the light areas of something that you're doing, you could use the same technique. One last example of something cool you could do with it is uh, tattoos. So let's say you want to put a tattoo on her face of some sort and you have sort of like a neat abstract pattern like this like I found. Um, 
using the blend if you can knock things out of this and get some really cool interesting effects so the first thing I'm going to do is actually set it to hard light and then uh, drop the opacity to maybe around 80 just to help out a little bit and then what I'm going to do is go to the blend if and then start knocking things out So we're just trying to find a, like a cool balance of shapes, and I'll show you something else in a second that you can do. All right, let's say we're cool with that. And one other thing you're going to want to do when you're doing tattoos and there's harsh lighting on someone, see how the, the image is going over these well-lit areas? What you want to do is come down to the underlying layer bit and pull that down ever so slightly. And you'll notice right here especially, and in the nose, you have uh, the tattoos sort of disappearing because it's kind of blown out. One other thing you'll notice is that other light areas in the skin where there's uh, pores and texture that are light, that'll start to show through too. If you check out the cheek right here, you can see how it starts to come through a little bit, and that's always good. So let's say we're happy with this for a second. I'm going to mess with the saturation just a tad. But what you can do now which sort of lets you uh, play with to find neat shapes is use your levels and you'll get all sorts of different things going on and you can decide what looks the coolest to you so I'll just speed this up and play with this for a second and hopefully the end result is somewhat decent now I'm not super crazy with the way it turns out in the end because I'm just screwing around with it but it only took a few minutes and I guess it would give you uh, a number of ideas of cool things you could do if you decide you want to do some uh, tribal or techie tattoos on some characters or something like that. It's a matter of using different blending modes and just erasing and masking things and just playing with it. Anyways, I really hope you learned something with these two tutorials. I'll have some more things to show you soon. Take care and thanks a lot.